Hello, I'm Lars Svensson, Chairman of the Heart and Vascular Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. And I thought it'd be useful to show a video of how we do the elephant trunk procedure. Um, and I suppose you could say it's a modified elephant trunk procedure. But this is the technique we found very helpful. And in the prospect of randomized trial we did, of which about 60% of patients had elephant trunk procedures for total arch replacements looking at brain protection. The overall mortality rate was 0.8% and the stroke rate 0.8%. And uh, I must admit, when we saw the results, I even found it hard to believe that the results were so good. So um, I thought it would be important just to share with you how we do the procedure and some of the things that are important. The case of illustration is a patient with Marfan syndrome who had a previous composite valve graft insertion and needed a ascending arch elephant trunk procedure. And the patient also has a descending and thoracic abdominal uh, dissection going into the iliac arteries. So um, to start off, here's the video. We use the uh, right subclavian artery, and here you see it's braced a bit to stop collapse. And here's the aortic arch, and there you see the proximal composite valve graft, and uh, we've got a cardioplegia cannula in position. So here are the clips going onto the distal part of the elephant trunk. And then um, I'm also going to attach a pacing wire to that so we can grab that pacing wire and straighten it out to the later stage if we decide that to do, in this case, potentially the proximal descending uh, with a stent graft and then the thoracic abdominal uh, open. And then on the proximal end, we put a silk suture that we're going to use to pull the inverted tube graft out um, in the when we've done a distal anastomosis to sew to that. And so that is stuffed uh, into itself. So this is the inversion technique that we use to push it in um, to the tube graft. And um, now we will take out the cardioplegia cannula. We've given cardioplegia and here's opening the ascending aorta. We still have the distal aorta clamped while we're cooling. In this particular patient, the total pump time was just under two hours, and that included cooling, the circa rest time, and also uh, rewarming. And we used double coolers uh, to do that and cool to 20 degrees on the nasopharyngeal. So there you see the distal end of the composite valve graft, and it, it had come loose, as you see there. And so we needed to sew to that. And then we're going to circa rest here and drain out uh, the blood. So the patient's in steep anti trindelenburg And it's also important to flood the field at 10 liters per minute of carbon dioxide to displace any potential air and reduce the risk of air embolism. And then here I'm opening up the arch and uh, beginning to plan how we're going to do the operation. Uh, note that we set up here so we can use an inclusion type of technique. In other words, we'll be able to use the aneurysm wall to wrap around the new graft. So you'll see here the uh, innominate, the carotid, and uh, the subclavian arteries more distally there. It's important that you don't suck blood out of the descending aorta. Try and keep as much blood in there as possible. Otherwise, you risk getting air embolism to the viscerals. So there's a suture just anchoring that. And here's a previously prepared uh, graft that I'm pushing into the descending aorta. I, I use a, a um, serot for that. And then I start at the caudal edge of the anastomosis. I, I guess you could say it's a three o'clock position to sew uh, the graft into position. And then as we're planning to do this as an inclusion technique, I go in and out, leaving a rim of tissue there that we'll be able to use to wrap around all of this repair at the end.
So this suture is really an anchoring suture. As you'll see, I'll use valve sutures to further strengthen this anastomosis to make it absolutely hemostatic and also uh, to make sure that we don't have a risk of rupture. Here's a critical part of sewing the left subclavian artery into position and making sure that uh, that's not constricted. And you'll see later there's some critical pledges in this operation that you're going to use to make sure you have good sealing. So now we're moving clockwise around the rest of that anastomosis. Notice that this is not entirely a um, horizontal in the sense of flat anastomosis. You want to be able to have a fairly good sized anastomosis without constriction of your inserted elephant trunk. And we'll go through stages of stretching uh, this anastomosis as you'll see in a while. So you move around there clockwise and then tie that into position. So shortly we will uh, then uh, put in the plegeted sutures here, once again remembering the inclusion technique. This plegeted we're going to put on the outside is a very important plegeted for anchoring your anastomosis. And then you, the, another important pledge is, is in the subclavian artery or the common carotid, if you, that's where you're doing your anastomosis, because this is going to give the strength to that anastomosis uh, when you come to sewing the next part, in other words, the, the greater vessels. So those are valve sutures I use with the small pledges. I put the small pledges on the graft size to try and reduce bulk. And this is to make sure you have no leaks at the distal anastomosis. I realize it adds a bit of time uh, to the anastomosis. You can do this anastomosis or the whole elephant trunk in less than 20 minutes. Uh, but adding this in means you've got a very hemostatic seal. There you see me stretching that anastomosis to make sure you have no constriction at that anastomosis. and then you pull that graft out. So in this particular case, the total circa rest time was 32 minutes with putting those interrupted valve sutures. Now notice I leave a little cuff there of that graft to help seal in the subclavian artery. So that's gonna sort of wrap into the uh, subclavian. Now the first suture here goes from inside out through that anchoring pledge that I mentioned on the outside then we'll take it through that pleasure back into the aorta again and then tie that and make sure that you have a nice seal there. And there's the pleasure on the inside of the subclavian. In this case, it was a pretty big subclavian, so there were actually two pledges there that I sewed to in the subclavian again to make sure that you get a complete hemostatic seal there on that part of the anastomosis. Notice how that cuff now is going to be used to roll into the subclavian artery. Those pledges give a lot of strength, especially in, the, for example, this patient with Marfan's where the, the tissue is fragile. Now we're gonna run up the edge of the carol patch next to the common carotid and innominate. And notice again how I grab a lot of tissue there to get that anastomosis sealed completely. And obviously pull that suture pretty tight. So there's the nominate artery. And now we're going to go from inside out again through that anchoring pledget again. And then setting up for an inclusion technique, we're going to go through the aorta from the outside, through the graft, and then back out again. So there we're going through the graft again, and then out. So again, keeping that cuff of aorta available for the later wrap. 
of this anastomosis. Most of the time, the anastomosis is secure enough. You, you don't have any problems with bleeding, but it it's, uh, just adds an extra layer of protection against bleeding at the anastomosis. So here, you would stretch again the distal anastomosis. Make sure your vessels are nice and open. And then we're going to fill this up with saline to get rid of any uh, gaseous pockets in the descending aorta. And then we'll use the subclavian artery to flush out the nominate artery uh, to make sure that there's no air there. And in this case, as you see, I'm not using any anti-grade or retrograde brain uh, perfusion. Now watch the bubbles come out of the subclavian as we flush there, a couple of bubbles came out. And then I just take a sorot uh, across that graft to clamp it, uh, squeeze out any potential bubbles before doing that. And there's a sorot. Now here's another critical suture. So this is um, on the lesser curve of the arch. I use these valve sutures that are placed earlier, but I keep one of them to take bites on the graph to um, lessen that curve. In other words, you don't want to kink there and to make that acute angle, you use that. Then there are another two sutures that are critical. This is through the distal anastomosis and the graft once again through that anchoring pledget. And this is to make sure you have no bleeding at that uh, angle in the anastomosis between the carol patch and the distal aorta um, anastomosis. So again, it's important to get through that pledget. I actually missed it here. And so I'll take a second stitch to get it through that pledger so you have that strength. Again, because this is a fragile aorta, you want to build in as much strength as you can into your anastomoses. So there's the first stitch. And then the second one, you don't need to take the distal um, anastomosis cuff. You just take it through the graft and then out through the aorta. So there's a piece of graft and then out. And that takes care of that angle. And we'll do that again on the uh, closer to the surgeon anastomosis. So there through the distal anastomosis and the graft. And then we'll take another one through the graft itself and the carol patch. And that just makes so much, so much difference as far as the risk of bleeding after the operation by closing off this, in a sense, proactively. So as you see in the number of sutures we use to proactively get hemostasis, both the interrupted pledgeted sutures, <coughs> excuse me, and also for the arch anastomosis. So there uh, we're using a Teflon strip for anastomosis. I'm using a valve suture because the needle is stronger and we're anastomosing to the end of that composite valve graft, but I'm picking up some of the aorta too to make sure we have complete hemostasis at that anastomosis. So you need a strong needle, and uh, that's where the valve suture needle, uh, this is a SH needle, is particularly helpful. And then it's a matter of capturing uh, that Teflon felt be generous with fairly big bites and doing that anastomosis coming up here on the right hand side of the anastomosis. And then as, as you see again this is set up for inclusion technique with a rim of aorta that um, we can later use. So now is the leftward side of the anastomosis. Good big bites, strong tissue, using that composite graft. Now here's uh, the wrap. So this is the leftover tissue in the arch wrapping around the anastomosis. And then, as you see here, we've reperfused the heart. The heart is beating. 
And there you have that wrap and we'll put a couple more sutures, sutures in to seal that uh, eventually at the end. So that's basically the operation. Uh, this patient had 20 cc's of mediastinal drainage overnight, uh, even though it was a redo and uh, very little from the chest tubes and uh, woke up the next morning extubated without any problems and uh, did very well. So I think uh, this is a nice way to do the elephant trunk procedure. I hope you find it uh, useful. Uh, and if you have any questions, you're always welcome to contact me. Thank you for watching it.